Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, we're doing a French country Christmas birdhouse. For my project today, I'm going to be using this birdhouse that I got from an online craft store. I will link it below. I thought about also adding this little candlestick to make it a pedestal birdhouse, but I decided against that idea in the end. Next, I'm going to be using IODs, or Christmas tree mold, and amazing casting resin. I'm pouring out equal parts A and B, and then pouring them together and stirring for 30 seconds, and the mixture will turn clear when it's ready. When the mixture is ready, I'm going to pour it into these garland designs in the O Christmas tree mold. I use these a lot. I'm just obsessed with them, really. They're absolutely beautiful. While that's setting up, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze. I'm misting the surface of my wooden birdhouse, and then I'm going to start applying that glaze. You can use this glaze like a gel stain. So I'm applying it with a chip brush, and then I'm going to take a paper towel, and I'm going to blend and also wipe back the excess. This is such a beautiful warm wood tone. I'm going to be applying the glaze to the roof of the birdhouse and then I'm also going to be applying it to the little base of the birdhouse as well. You can find a full product list in the description below and most of these products on our website theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. I'm using the Paint Couture Glaze as a stain today, but you could use a traditional stain if you don't have access to this, or you could create a paint wash with a water-based paint and water that down and use that instead. Once my stain is completely dry, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Angelic Mineral Paint. I'm just going to be applying it to the center body part of the birdhouse. I'm trying not to get too much on the area that we stained, and I'm only going to do one coat. I actually really love that the wood grain and part of that base wood tone is showing through that paint. It definitely gives this birdhouse a wonderfully rustic sort of a feel. It definitely fits in with the tone that I'm trying to achieve. So I'm just going to apply one coat. Once my paint is completely dry, I'm going to focus on the garlands that we cast. I really like the idea of having these at the center point on the peak of the bird house there, but I need to cut it to fit properly. So I have my little craft knife there. I'm just going to cut off the excess on the right hand side. I'm doing that at a little bit of a point so that we can try and match up the other side a bit easier. I'm going to try and cut a similar shape so that they will fit together nicely. This is something I had to have a bit of a play with, and I definitely wanted to go with resin here because it is going to be hanging off the edge and I think if I used clay it would probably crack. I'm going to take the excess pieces that I cut off and I'm going to add those to the ends of the garland pieces that we're putting on the peak of the birdhouse. Once I'm happy with the configuration, I'm going to take my Gorilla Super Glue Gel and I'm going to apply the glue to the birdhouse itself. And then I'm going to position my resin pieces where I want them to go. Here I added the glue to the birdhouse and also to the resin piece where it's going to connect with the other piece. I'm not worried if this doesn't look perfect here because we're going to be layering another mold over the top. Here I'm just lifting up the end of the garland and squeezing in that extra little piece underneath. Once everything is glued down securely, I'm going to take my brush that I used with the Angelic Mineral Paint and I am just doing some dry brushing over the top of the roof. We're going for a wintry, snowy feel here, so I feel like this look will definitely lend it to that look. We're also going to be using another product over the top, the snow, but I definitely love this look. I love how it grabs the fibers of the wood as well, and it also gives it that sort of woodland rustic look. Next, I'm going to be using Vintage Moss Mineral Paint by Paint Couture, and I'm just going to be adding it to the resin castings that we glued on. Now, I decided to do this. I wasn't exactly sure where I was going with this project just yet, so I wanted to paint this to get, get a bit of a better idea of how this was going to look overall. I often work on my projects in stages, and they sort of evolve as I'm going along. 
Once that paint's dry, I'm going to move on to this little bell casting. I will link it below. I'm going to add that same green paint to the greenery that's on this bell casting. And then once I have painted the greenery on this design and it's completely dry, I'm then going to use Paint Couture's Antique Gold Luxe Metallic Paint. And I'm just going to apply that to the bells and the bow. If you are in the US and you'd like to try any of the Paint Couture products that I'm showing today, I will have my affiliate link in the description and on the screen. And if you use my code FARMHOUSE75 in November, you will get free shipping on orders of $75 or more. This is my first time using the antique gold before I was only using bronze. That's all I had. And I am loving the beautiful pigments in this design. Once my paint was dry, I used that same super glue to glue my casting down. Next, I'm adding some cornstarch to my Oh Christmas Tree mold again. And I'm going to be using clay to cast a, another one of these garlands, a left and a right piece. And I'm just working my dust air dry clay into the design and using Using my fingers to push out the excess clay. Once I'm happy with that, I will flex that mold and carefully pull it out. I swapped over to air dry clay here because these pieces are going to be glued onto a flat surface to support that clay. I couldn't really use clay in the other design, as I said, because it probably would have cracked. Next, I am going to position my castings on the birdhouse where I want them to go. I'm just checking out placement here to make sure I'm happy. And then I'm going to be using my Sealy's wood glue. This is a quick set glue and I got this from Bunnings Australia. So I'm just making sure that I smooth that product all over the back of my castings and then I'm pressing them down and I'm going to repeat the same process for the other one. Once I have those glued down in place, I'm going to take this other little swag mold and I'm going to work my dust air dry clay into that design just like before. I really love this little design. I'll make sure that I link it below. I'm going to be making this particular design to go on the front section of the birdhouse. I'm just going to then flex my mold and then carefully peel it out. Just take your time with this design. Adding that cornstarch definitely helps, but also flexing it and just being really patient with it as you pull it out helps. I'm then going to add some glue to the back of it and I'm going to layer that design over the top of the o Christmas tree molds that we just put down. Next, I wanted to add some more little pine cones, so I'm going to use this other mold here and I'm just working that clay into the smaller design and once I'm happy with that, again, I'm going to flex the mold to help it release and then I'm going to carefully take it out and I'm also going to cast the larger design from here and I'm going to be casting two of each of them because I want to position them in the left and right hand corners of my birdhouse. I'm then going to be casting some of the berry designs from that same mold. So I'm just working my clay into that design and then really flexing that mold and pulling them out. There's quite a few different shaped berries here and I'm just going to be casting a couple of them to go on each side. I really feel like adding these adds to that sort of woodland rustic natural feel. There's also this little cluster of three berries. We're also going to cast one for each side. And then once I'm happy with that, I will glue them all down. If you're looking for some more Christmas craft ideas, make sure you check out my other Christmas videos. I have lots of inspiration for the festive season. Once I'm finished gluing all of my castings down, I'm going to go back to that same mold and I'm going to cast this thinner little piece of greenery here. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to carefully take that design out. I'm going to be positioning this around the little hole in the birdhouse. I want to make this look like a wreath. So I'm going to cast an additional two pieces of this. So I've got three of them and I'm just manipulating the clay so that it is shaped in that round wreath style. And then I'm adding some glue to the back of it and gluing them in place. Once I have all of my little wreath pieces glued down, I'm going to take this little bow mold and I'm going to cast one of the smaller designs from this here. And I'm just working that clay out. And then once I am happy with that, I'll carefully pull my design out and I'm going to be gluing that just at the base of the wreath here. 
I ended up casting another two of these swag designs and I'm just adding some glue to the back and I'm going to add them at a bit of an angle, at a bit of a curve on the side there. I felt like adding these designs on either side really tied the front with the sides. It just continued that lovely, natural, rustic theme. After gluing everything down, I then gave them 24 hours to dry. Next, I'm going to use Extreme Guard in Satin by Paint Couture to seal my molds in, but also this is going to help when I am layering other colors down. If I make any errors, I'm able to come back in and wipe those up once I have that clear coat down and it's dry. Once my clear coat is completely dry, I'm going to be using the same vintage moss mineral paint that I used before. I'm just using a small artist brush to add that color to the wreath and also all of the other greenery. I'm loving this more muted earthy green for the festive season this year, but you could go with the more traditional deep green if you wanted to go in a different direction. Once my green paint had completely dried, I took that Van Dyke Brown Glaze again and I'm just using a small artist brush and I'm applying it to the little pine cones that we have in our mold designs. Now you could use a brown paint for this, but I love the subtle look that using this glaze gives. And also I'm going in with a wet wipe to wipe back some of the excess to create some tonal contrast. Once I'm finished adding that glaze to the pine cones on the front, I will of course go and add it to the designs on the sides. Once the glaze is dry, I took Paint Couture's British Grey Chalk Paint and I'm adding that to these sweet little berries that we added at the start. I felt like this color really mixed in beautifully with the winter woodland theme that we're going for, that French country Christmas look. So I'm just using a small artist brush to apply it to the berries. At this point, if you're going to try this, you could go with the more traditional red if you liked. You could keep them white. I just loved this pop of subtle gray. After adding it to all of the berries, I took that same gray and I'm using the end of my paintbrush now. I've dipped it in the chalk paint and I'm just dabbing that lovely gray onto the sections of the molds that have little berries. And then I'm also adding it to the garlands, anywhere that I feel like it looks like a little berry might be. I've used this technique quite a few times. You can also use it to sort of mimic the look of Christmas lights in your garlands. I feel like it's just a really sweet but subtle touch. Once my paint is completely dry, I'm gonna take that angelic mineral paint again and I'm just going to be doing some more dry brushing. So I'm getting a bit of paint on my brush, dabbing off the excess onto a paper towel and then running that brush over the details of our castings. This really highlights all of those beautiful elements and those details. It just gives it such beautiful definition, but also it's adding to that wintry scene that we're trying to create here. So I'm adding it to all of the molds that we've added to the design on the front and on the sides. Once that layer is dry, I'm going to take the Antique Gold Luxe Metallic Paint again, and I'm going to add it to the little bow that we added to the wreath. I'm loving this pop of gold, but if this was not to your style, you could use silver here instead, or maybe you could go more traditional and add a red bow. Once the gold is dry, I'm using Paint Couture's Vintage Lace Luxe Metallic Paint. I've got a little bit on my brush and I am running it over the details of our castings. I don't have too much of it on my brush. It's a bit tricky to see here, but it is giving this design a lovely shimmer. It's further highlighting those details that we drew attention to with our dry brushing. And again, it's just giving this piece a lovely shimmer a bit of glimmer. It's just really beautiful and subtle, but very effective. I'm going to continue adding this subtle hint of that vintage lace to all of our castings on the front and on the sides. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Crust Texture Medium. I'm going to take some of that mixture out and put it into a plastic container. I'm just using a palette knife for this. And then I'm going to take that angelic mineral paint that we used before and I'm going to add it to the crust medium. You can tint this and I want this to look more like snow. Once I have done that, I'm going to fill in that little hole that was on the top there for the hanger and I'm going to start adding that crust medium. I'm trying to think as I'm doing this, how snow would fall on this surface. So I'm applying it, I'm spreading it, but I'm also going to be dragging it down the roof as if it's sort of sliding down. Maybe it snowed the night before and it's just sliding down, some of it's melting. I don't want the entire top to be covered. I still wanna be able to see some of that beautiful wood tone and the white dry brushing that we did. So I'm just gonna continue adding the mixture until I'm happy with the look. and. At this point, if you're going to try this, this will be something that you will just do to your liking. I am loving how this is looking with that crust medium mixed with the white paint, but Pankature also has embossing medium. This is also a beautiful alternative for snow if you want to create a snowy effect. So I'm just going to continue working my way around the piece here and adding it to the roof until I am happy with how this looks. I'm also adding a little bit to the front part of the roof as well as if it, the snow has sort of just made its way over the edge. And again, this will just be to your liking how much you add. I'm also going to add some of the crust medium to the base of the birdhouse. So I'm working my little palette knife in there and pushing it in so that it does meet up with the mold details. And I'm just going to add this around the whole base of the birdhouse. If this look isn't for you, you could definitely just leave this step out. On the sides, I'm also working some of that crust medium up the side of the wall a little bit there, like it's accumulated in the corners there. I don't want any of that crust to cover or obscure the beautiful castings that we've put on there, but I definitely want it to look like they're in amongst that snow. I also added a hint of that crust medium to the little perch on the birdhouse as well. Once my crust medium was dry, I took some of that Extreme Guide in satin and I added it to certain sections of the snowy look that we've created. Now this is going to act like a glue. I probably could have just added the glitter that we're going to add in the next step to the wet crust medium, but I didn't decide to add it until later when it had already dried. So this is just an alternative if you decide like me later that you want to add some glitter, the Extreme Guard in satin works really well. So I'm just dabbing it on. I don't need full coverage here. I'm then going to add this lovely white glitter here. I'm just using the end of a plastic spoon and just dabbing that glitter over the top. I don't need it to go all over. I don't need full coverage. I just want a hint of that lovely glitter so that it looks like glistening snow. And here's a look at our finished birdhouse. I love how this turned out. It was so fun layering those molds and using Paint Couture's crust medium to create that snow. Let me know what you think of today's project in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.